Since I was a kid, I always wanted to star in my own action movies as a warrior in the medieval times. And with the new technologies, this is now possible from home on a laptop. And in this video, we will take a look at these technologies. And I will explain in three steps how I turned myself into a warrior and how you can too. There are three steps. First, we get our head scan using Polycam. Then we take that scan into Character Creator's new plugin, Headshot 2. And finally, we bring it into Blender. The first step is to get a photo scan. I used Polycam to get my scans and I highly recommend them. It's the best quality scanning app I used. Also, you don't have to only use your phone. You can use your camera or drone and upload your pictures through the web app. So you should definitely check it out. Best way I found to get a photo scan of a face is to lean your head up against something. Our best results were from leaning up against a pole or a tree. You should do this in the shade or an overcast day to avoid direct sunlight or casting shadows during the scan. We would also blink on command. The scanning person would stop scanning and say blink. So we don't have movement in the pictures. We also tried scanning with our eyes closed, but that doesn't work with Headshot 2. You need open eyes for it. We did some tests, but my hair was in the way. So for a better scan, I put a headband on my head. And this was the best scan we got. Downloaded GLTF because that downloads it with the textures. And once it is downloaded, open Blender. And here, press F3 and search for GLTF import. It looks a bit weird, just shade it smooth and it will look better. For Headshot 2 it needs to be looking forward. I have this human model in here. I will try to line up our noses so my face is completely looking straight ahead. Now let's clean up this mesh. I will go into the edit mode. The first time you bring it in it's going to be made up of parts. I'm pressing L to select the connected geometry but as you can see it is not one part. There are a lot of overlapping vertices. To fix this I will select everything by pressing A F3 and search for by and then choose merge by distance. This will take care of all those overlapping geometry. Now let's get rid of this pole, the lasso tool and go into the wireframe. To get rid of these floating parts I will press L while my mouse is hovering over this area and then control I to invert the selection and delete those vertices. Take the head to the world origin. Now we have some issues with the mesh. My beard makes it look weird. So I'm going to go into sculpt mode, choose smooth, and then just smooth out these areas. Once we have a smoother mesh, we can export it out. But I want to export it with the textures. GLTF format comes with textures embedded in, but we need to save them out. So they also import into character creator with the textures. Go into the shader editor and we do not need this image and this part. We just need the base image and the normal. Open another tab here and go into image editor. And once the image is opened up here, I can go to image click save as, click on your scan, F3, and search for wave, then choose export wavefront, which is .obj. Now since our head is selected and there are other things in the scene, I will just choose selected only, so I only export the head, and then choose material groups, so I have the materials included. And then the second step, character creator 4. Here, if you're coming from any other program, I suggest you go into preference, and then here, choose your preset. I chose Blender. This helped me adjust to this program lightning fast. Go into File, Import, Import, and then choose my scan. Once it loads, press F to snap to that object. And once this is selected, I will go into Headshot 2. If you don't see this, go into Plugins and activate it here. Once here, go into Mesh, and then with our head selected, click Start Head Generation. Once it is open, this is where we will be operating. The first thing is we need to align these points same as here. So going around it like this. Imagine yourself reading a book left to right. Same thing here, left to right. Or if you don't want to do it one by one, you can click auto detection. 
But if you click auto detection while you're zoomed in like this, it's going to give an error because it depends on your view. So if I look at it straight on like this and then press auto detection, it's going to detect all the points. They're not perfect, still needs adjusting, but this makes it a lot faster. Eyes are quite important. And this is why I said we need open eyes because these points go over the eyelids. I'm just going around trying to adjust the points to my reference and don't worry if it's not perfect in your first try in my first try i didn't watch any tutorials but it was intuitive enough that i just ran through it and i got a all right result then in my second test i got a better result then i decided to watch the tutorials on reillusion's official youtube channel then i started getting great results it takes a bit of trial and error like any other program but once you do it a couple times and you know where to click, you can get some great results. Once all the points have been placed correctly, we can go into the second step, Head Gen AI. Here we can see the eyes are not correct. That's okay, we can just go back. And then let's go back to the second step once again. And once you're happy with this result, we can move into the third step, Refine Mesh. Here we're going to be using the smooth brush to smooth everything out. In the official tutorials it is suggested to go inside the nose and smooth these from inside out. And I will try to correct my hairline here as well. I'm also going to uncheck keep neck shape and then click attach to body. Here we can choose the texture size. 8K works the best. I think it uses something to upres your image and the results look really good, but it takes a lot of time to load. So we will go with 4K, which is still great results, but it will take much less time and we can upres it later on and choose your preset here. So I will go with mail and type 2 and then click generate. Once it's loaded, hover your mouse over this area again and press F to see the result. Now the first thing that I do not like is the eye color. So I will go into content, item, search for eyes and then choose a better fitting eye color. That looks better. Return back to headshot v2. And then here we can do some adjustments. I will choose minimum eyelid rim to fix my eyelids. And then let's see how the mouth works. It can also use some fixing. I will choose repair mouth corners and then click update skin texture. And now this is a character creator mesh. So we can do any additional adjustments we want here to get the results closer. So I can make myself older or Mr. Bean. No. Um, change the eye angle a little. My eyes don't seem even, so I will go into eye and then here I can change the eye scale individually or the height. Now we can do additional things like hair and beard. I want to have this hair like anime style. And then you can see some of the original textures in the hairline. To fix this, we have to export this picture out and fix it in a photo editing software. So we need to go outside character creator and this is something I don't like. Once it is saved out, double click on the photo diffuse and change it with your newly edited picture and then update. And we got rid of that hair issue. Although my Photoshop skills weren't perfect, so we still have some issues. But let's move on. Let's dress me up a little. We can also do some additional things like beard, because I want this character to be a warrior. Do some skin effects. But let's choose something to better represent what I actually look like. That's looking closer. So now we are in the skin editor and it added a few things because I chose this preset. First I'll get rid of these wrinkles and then this muscle is a bit a little too much so I will bring that down. And once we are in the skin editor we can do other additional things. There are so many other skin effects. I will choose a scar because like I said I want this guy to be a warrior. I want him to look like he's been fighting for a long time. So we can try to add some cool skin effects like this. Scale it down, change its position. We can change the color of the scar here. Add one more. One of the skin effects this preset added automatically was this beard, which hides this transition a lot better. Upon entering the skin editor, the texture quality is automatically reduced to 2K. But once we are exiting out of the skin editor, we can restore it back up to 4K again. One more scar. Let's pull the texture quality back up to 4K and we can get out of this editor by unchecking this activate editor box. Let's give this character some life. We have some animation presets here, but I also have this digital soul pack. 
I can choose a preset here by double clicking and I have these extra animations here. I'm going to choose my character, double click on the animation. Now I can export this out. So I will go into file, export, FBX, clothed character. Choose blender here because that's where I'm exporting it to. Mesh and motion, max texture size, you can make it 4K. Convert image format to JPEG and I will turn this into 24 frames. Here I'm going to choose current animation and all and export. It's best to have a separate file for this. And then back in Blender, I'm going to be using this add-on to import my character in. I will click import character, navigate to my file and then import in my character. This add-on hooks up all the materials correctly instead of importing the character in as an FBX. And in Blender, we need to do a couple things. So I always click on the armature, go into viewport display, make it stick and click in front so I can see my rig at all times. It always brings in the specular a bit too much for my taste so I will go into the specular map and bring it down to 0 0.01. Copy this value and paste it into the other textures. And the eyes sometimes works wrong with this texture. Open up my add-on and then character build settings. Only selected and make it basic and then rebuild basic materials for the eyes. And to even make it better you can turn on clear coat for all of these eye materials here. And then with good lighting these characters will look great. A few additional things I have to mention are Using Kitbash 3D's Cargo Pro I imported this house model from the Shogun kit And this thing for the portal from the Ancients kit Then jumping into the Rococo Smart Suit Pro 2 We performance captured our animations While creating the environment I used Geoscatter and Botanic add-ons For the nature scenes and the forests For the facial expressions I used the Motion Live plugin inside iClone 8 Bringing people from real life and putting them into your animations is such a fun thing to do Next I would like to create a digital copy of my entire family and create a feature length film. In my next video I plan to talk about how I created the zombie army so stay tuned for that. And let me know what other aspects of this animation you would like to learn about. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. I'll see you in the next one. I hope.